is student engagement changing? Well, I think it's it's different in a couple of ways. I think um, you know, 30 years ago when I entered the field, students were engaged, but they were engaged in different ways. And for example, one of the things today that I notice a big difference in is students are very connected with each other. Um, so their paths and channels of communication, uh, whether they're on campus living together or whether they're uh, commuter students or whether they're far away or whether they're at a distance, um, they're really in touch with each other and they're helping each other out a lot more than they used to. And I think, you know, that's a direct result of the new technologies that let them do that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think that students are more engaged in actively being a part of their education. I, I certainly remember when I was in school that you know, my main activity was going to class, taking really good notes, studying my notes afterwards, um, making sure that I did all my homework. I think students today are, are more a part of what's happening in the classroom by looking things up while class is going on or by being involved with a, an online discussion or using clickers in the classroom to interact with the, the material in, in some new ways. So I, and I think faculty that I know try to encourage that. They want their students, believe that their students will learn better if they're more engaged in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a shift um, that I'm hearing for the past year or two of uh, the change from uh, sort of the top-down approach to more the center spoke, mm -hmm. center of the spoke. Uh, could you guys talk about that? Uh, is is the students are the students learning in a different way from from the teacher? And what's the role of the teacher now? I mean, if you can look up all the facts and figures online, if you can look these things up. So, what are, what are we teaching, and how are we teaching now? Well, I mean, I think teachers um, end up being more responsive to students because students are bringing more to the class than they might have brought before. And I think you know. Years ago, there might always be one or two students who were very active and, and made a big effort to bring things into the class. But now that the barriers to, to doing other kinds of research and to going other places and consulting other resources are lower, there's more of a democratizing effect. You find more students in the class bringing things in. Um, and then, and then, not so much the star student interacting with the teacher, but a couple of, of students or three or four students interacting with each other and building on things. I can remember when I was teaching that there would always be the star student, and, the star, and if you asked for an answer, that would be the student that would answer. I got so frustrated with that model that I actually started calling on students by name, which they hated, but <laughs> that was my way of getting everybody to be engaged instead of just one or two people. But, you know, I, I hear from people that are teaching today using online discussion that, you know, they hear from students that they would never hear from in class because the mode of interaction is different. They feel more comfortable to write their thoughts and be, and t be able to take the time to edit what they're saying before they post it up than to be sitting in front of a whole classroom of students and having to worry about whether their words are going to come out right or not. And it's interesting that what, what I found is that uh, the students who speak up more in class are a different group of students than the students who contribute yeah. more to the discussions. So it really unleashes a whole new set of students because it's a better medium for them to, to work through. They feel more comfortable with mm -hmm. it. And is it already... Um I wonder, uh, is faculty with you in the U.S., is, are they already, uh, are large uh, amounts of faculty already using those discussion boards, etc.? Because with us, uh, we also see that uh, a faculty, when they use an, a CMS, they start using things like announcement and uh, uploading uh, readers and things like that. And uh, the next step, so more use things like uh, putting out assignments for students first and then have a look into it or asking uh, students to contribute online mm -hmm. and then look into it. With us, it is not, not yet common with all of faculty members. So I wondered, is that a difference between us? Oh, I wouldn't say it's common across all faculty, and I think it depends in some sense on the discipline. For instance, our Department of Education is very active in using online discussions, but probably the scientists would be less so. Okay. 
I think it is growing, though. I mean, it seems mm -hmm. to me there's been a kind of slow but steady growth in, in the use of those kinds of discussions. And we've gotten to the point, of course, we're mostly education and psychology, but we've gotten to the point where not only are people engaged in the discussions um, and using the discussion boards, but they've become connoisseurs of discussion boards and they have a favorite configuration for them. They've gotten, you know, more deeply into them and they have discussions as to, you know, which boards work best and which kinds of configurations. So I think, and I think that's been, you know, in the last five or six years, okay. a lot of progress. But I agree, it started with posting assignments and it started yes. with all the yes, very exactly. standard kinds of things that people were doing, mm -hmm. you know, for years and years.